In this video, we're going to talk about how to connect your bank into QuickBooks Online and how to download your bank and credit card transactions into QuickBooks Online so you don't have to enter them manually and you can take full advantage of the automation process that QuickBooks gives you. We're going to click on the transactions uh, button on the left navigation bar and then we're going to click on bank transactions. Since this is a new account, uh, you don't see the standard screen. You're going to see this screen that's uh, basically your startup screen and you're going to click on connect accounts. Now, if you don't have a direct connection to the bank, you're going to have to upload your file as a CSV file or maybe uh, log in into the, quick, into the bank account separately and download a QuickBooks file and then upload it manually into QuickBooks. So this particular example is when, when you do have a user ID and password to connect your banks directly. Okay, you're going to click on the bank that you're using or you're going to search your bank. So if you use uh, Citibank or something like that, you click on City. If you use uh, Relay Bank, you type uh, Relay, whatever it is, until you find the bank that you want to connect. Once you select your bank, you're going to put the user ID and password of your bank and click continue. If you have multiple accounts, you get to choose which of these accounts you want to connect. You pick on that one and then you click on the drop down menu and you link it to a current account in your chart of accounts or create a new account. Chart of accounts is a different concept that I'm going to talk about in detail in an entirely different video. So make sure you subscribe to the channel and check out the chart of accounts video. I'm also putting links in the description to all the videos that I think you should be watching after watching this video. But assuming you have a full chart of accounts or you understand the chart of accounts, all you have to do in here is just pick the account that you want to link it to. And then once you have that in there or you click on add new and you create the new account, it works, it works with either, uh, either option. Once you do that, uh, then in the bottom, you get to pick how many transactions do you want to bring? What, what kind of history worth of transactions do you want to bring? So you want to bring all of last year? Do you want to bring all of the current year? Do you want to click on custom and select a particular date range to get started? Uh, of course, that's going to be up to you. Uh, if you watch the chart of accounts video that I discussed, I talk about beginning balances and that's a really important thing. Sometimes you might need to like work with your accountant to make sure that we understand fully what beginning balances mean and that we're not just bringing in transactions from the bank in the wrong period. Because the worst thing you can do is bring transactions and you're bringing a bunch of duplicates or you bring transactions and you're missing a bunch of transactions and you can't reconcile. So this is a really important decision to make in terms of you know how far back you're gonna go and how many transactions you're gonna bring. Then you're gonna hit continue. And once the connection is completed, you click on done. So in this particular example, I literally just connected one of my bank accounts and all the transactions are not gonna show up in here so I can start uh, categorizing them. Now I'm gonna X out of here for a second and we're gonna uh, also X out of any pop-ups and we're going to see exactly what this screen looks like when you first log into it. Now, depending on which, when you set up the uh, QuickBooks Online, this screen might look slightly different. So I switched it out so it's, so I put it in the sort of the more common view. So you're going to have potentially two different ways that it could look. Uh, hopefully the one you have is exact same one that I have on the screen. So all the transactions from the bank have been uh, downloaded. They're not posted into QuickBooks yet. So they're not, uh, they're not going into any particular uh, uh, register yet. You actually have to choose what you're going to do with each of these transactions. And, um, and then based on that, then you're going to make um, a decision on how you're going to categorize them. So once they're downloaded, essentially all you're going to do is you're going to click on the transaction itself you're going to uh, type the name of the vendor or create the vendor. So this one's actually called Unpay. And the reason why I know it's called Unpay is because it's in the description. Now, what's tricky about this is that the description sometimes contains a lot more information that you need. And sometimes it doesn't even contain exactly what you need. You actually have to go out there and, and look at bank statements and do some research to figure out how to categorize these transactions. I'm going to do an entirely different video um, around categorizing and bank rules and all this stuff. Right now, I'm just focused on the connection uh, of, of the bank. But this gives you a general idea what you're going to do with the transactions once they are downloaded. So once they're downloaded, you click on confirm and officially you put that information in, in your bank register. If you actually go into the bank register by clicking on go to bank register 
and I'll select the bank account, you see that all the transactions that we entered from bank feeds are gonna show up in here. Uh, when you first connect the bank, you're actually gonna see a beginning balance. Sometimes this is wrong, sometimes this is right. Um, sometimes the beginning balance actually matches your bank statement, sometimes it doesn't. Might need to work with an accountant to make sure this is accurate, but let's just work under the assumption that this was the correct beginning balance from the beginning of the year, from let's say December 31st, and then all the transactions that are bringing from January uh, stem from that beginning balance, so that's okay. But sometimes you actually have to delete that or modify that to make sure it matches the reality. Okay, so that's uh, essentially how you connect the banks, and this could be banks or credit cards, and how information starts flowing into, into QuickBooks Online. Again, I'm gonna do an entirely different video where I'll break down the screen and all you know, everything you can do with the screen uh, because there's, it's very rich, there's a lot of things you can do. And it's both for banks and credit cards. Now, let's say for example, you did not have the ability to connect your bank the way I did it by putting a username and password, but you have the ability to log into the bank separately and download a file. So let's do an example of that. So let's say that for whatever reason, you cannot do a direct connection from QuickBooks into the bank, or maybe you wanna download transactions that are not part of the date range that QuickBooks allows you to do a direct download through. So what you could do is you can go straight from the bank account or the credit card account uh, of the banking institution and every bank looks different, but this one has a little button here that says download bank activity. Uh, I'm gonna show you with Bank of America. So in Bank of America looks, obviously the website's a lot different and every bank is different. I'm not gonna show you an example with every bank, but in here there's a little button that says download. So Bank of America, for example, you get to pick the period that you wanna download for, or you do a custom date range, uh, depending on, on, on exactly what you wanna do. And then you pick the specific file type you wanna download. Now QuickBooks allows for a CSV file. So if you have something called a spreadsheet, a tap delimited, uh, that's, a, that's a CSV file eventually. Um, or it can do what's called a web connect or a .qbo file, either one works. So I'm gonna download this one and that's gonna be somewhere in my computer. And then I go back into Chase, I'm gonna go to download activity. And then uh, similar, I get to pick whether I want a CSV file or a QBO format. And then I get to pick whatever uh, date range I wanna bring and then click on download. So if, you have, if I have a manual file that I downloaded via CSV or a .qbo file, it's in my computer. When I go back into QuickBooks and let, let's say I couldn't do a direct connection the way I did it with the first Relay Bank, I'm gonna click on the drop down menu right there where it says link accounts. And then I'm gonna click on upload from file. So this is the manual way of uploading files. If you hap happen to have a spreadsheet or a .qbo file, there's a couple of formats here that allows you to bring in, but it needs to be kind of that format that the bank gives you. Then you click on uh, here where it says drag and drop or select files. And then we're gonna pick uh, the file that we just downloaded from Bank of America, hit continue. Then we're gonna map it. So we're gonna say, okay, which account are we gonna map this to? So let's say I wanna create a new one called, uh, well, actually I'm gonna do it to that, that BOA, that BOA checking, that's fine. And then click on continue and then done. And then all the transactions uh, get downloaded in here. And this is all the debits and all the credits that come in. And again, once you click on each one of these, you get to categorize it by picking the payee, the customer or the vendor, and then the income or expense account. Again, we'll, I'll do an entirely different video where I'll explain, I go pretty in depth on how to do categorization, how to pick your categories. You definitely wanna check out the chart of accounts video because every one of these things, when, I, when you click on the account and click on the drop down menu, essentially this is your chart of accounts. So you need to be intimately uh, aware of what your chart of accounts is. So then when you go categorize, you know what type of categories you are looking for. You're not just picking things at random here because if you do that and garbage in, garbage out, your, your reports are gonna be completely wrong. So that's in a nutshell how you connect your banks or upload uh, your banking files into QuickBooks Online. I hope this video was helpful. Make sure you check the description below for other videos that are similar or the more in-depth banking video and subscribe to the channel so you see other videos like this as soon as I post them. Thank you and I'll see you on the next one.